Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It's Monday, August 6th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. A school bus carrying musicians from New York City to Washington, D.C. overturned yesterday morning on the Baltimore-Washington Parkway near Route 32 in Anne Arundel County. Captain Russ Davies of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department said that 14 people were injured and transported to the R. Adams County Shock Trauma Center in Baltimore, all with non-life-threatening injuries. He said the bus left the highway and overturned in a wooded area, and everyone, thankfully, is expected to survive. With a passionate 33-minute speech in which he strolled around the stage, ad-libbed, praised, danced, and joked, spoke of sacrifice, love, glory, and overcoming the odds, Ray Lewis entered the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One of the best linebackers and leaders the game has ever seen, Lewis was the final man inducted of the seven Class of 2018 members on hand. He was preceded by Randy Moss, Brian Dawkins, Brian Erlocker, Jerry Kramer, Robert Brazil, and Bobby Bitard. From pro football to college football, Navy coach Ken Nematololo held his first official press conference during the Navy football's media day just prior to the Navy Fan Fest at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium on Saturday. Nematololo is entering his 11th year as the head coach of the midshipmen and feels very confident in his team as they prepare to take on the likes of Memphis and UCF this season. I couldn't be more excited about this year. I couldn't be more excited about this team, said the coach, especially because of the work they put in. Nematololo elaborated, saying that this team reminds him of some of the historic teams that he has been part of during his 21 years with the Naval Academy and credits a noticeable difference in their culture. Specifically, strength and conditioning will play a key role in helping maintain their winning ways. Last season, Navy started off very strong with a 5-0 and season, but ended the last seven regular season games with a 1-6 and record, including a heartbreaking 13-14 loss to Army in December up in Philadelphia. You can head on to ionanapolis.net and hear the entire 30-minute press conference and all of the thoughts of Coach Nematololo and key members of the team. If you are a flyer out of Baltimore, Washington International Airport, I've got good news for you. Michael Boyd, an airline consultant, has said that BWI is one of the cheapest airports in the nation. The average plane pair for passengers traveling out of BWI is $186.21, including taxes, which is the ninth cheapest among the 50s country largest airports. Oakland International Airport out in California took the title of the airport with the cheapest average fare, at $161.37. Our friends over in Virginia did not fare so well. Ronald Reagan, Washington's National Airport, has the 35th cheapest with average fares at $219.53. And Dulles is the second most expensive on the list with an average fare of $260.85. From airplanes to hotels, we told you about a month and a half ago that the Lowe's Annapolis Hotel was sold to a Chicago real estate developer, and that sale closed on Friday. Ultimately, the hotel will be rebranded as a graduate hotel, which currently has 11 hotels under that flag in mostly college towns across the U.S., such as Charlottesville, Berkeley, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And they are focused on the collegiate experience more than the nautical experience, which is what we saw here at the Lowe's. The developers plan to open the rebranded property in the fall of 2019. In the meantime, it is going to be operated as simply Hotel Annapolis. The updates to the hotel do include updates to all the guest rooms, common areas, 20,000 square feet of event space, and the hotel's restaurant, Bar Oak, which I happen to like, but I have a feeling that's going away. And we have heard from more than one bride that has their wedding booked at the Lowe's, who was unaware of the change in ownership, who has now been thrown into an absolute tizzy. Goodbye to the nautical theme. Hello to... A college theme that's going to highlight, obviously, the U.S. Naval Academy as well as St. John's College. 
That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. You want to stick around to the very end of this podcast because I do have some opinions and thoughts on the recent Annapolis Rising Benefit concert. And of course, we have George Young with DMV Weather, and he's coming right up after these few words from Kegs and Corks. Don't miss the best event of the summer. Come out Saturday, August 18th for the Kegs and Corks Festival at the Anne Arundel County Fairgrounds. Get tickets now at kegsandcorksfest.com to begin the party at noon instead of one with early access tickets. Tickets benefit the Special Olympics of Maryland and include a souvenir glass, unlimited wine and beer samples, plus live music all day, including headliner Kristen and the Noise. Enjoy over 80 Maryland wines, 40 craft beers, incredible food, and more. Go now to kegsandcorksfest.com. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, August 6th. Well, we've switched back into full-on summer mode in Annapolis and across all of Anne Arundel County with heat and humidity firmly in place. Look for highs today in the 87 to 94 degree range, along with very humid air and a small chance of scattered pop-up thunderstorms later in the day. Same for tomorrow, but maybe a bit hotter with heat indices, upper 90s to low 100s, and a bit stronger of a chance for p.m. storms. And then expect showers and storms on Wednesday as a cold front starts to move into the region from the west, which will help drop temps and humidity levels back to more normal levels Thursday and Friday. Okay, that's it for today. Be sure to download our free app by searching the Apple App Store or Google Play Store for DC MDVA weather so you can track all the storms on our Max Map radar tool and also get timely updates via push notifications regarding rain and any severe weather that breaks out. And be sure to also follow us on our website at dmvweather.com or on Facebook or Twitter so you can always stay weather informed. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there despite the heat and humidity. But always remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. September 29th, the inaugural Twist and Stout Festival at Quiet Waters Park along the shores of the South River. Twist and Stout, a Maryland wine, craft beer, music, food, and arts festival. Presented by the Anne Arundel County Department of Recreation and Parks along with the Maryland Wineries Association. Sample dozens of craft beers and Maryland wines. Dance the afternoon away to the sounds of Saved by Zero and the Groove Spot Band. Watch the plein air painters and shop dozens of artisans, crafters, and food trucks. Tickets are on sale now at twistandstout.org. T-W-I-S-T-A-N-D-S-T-O-U-T dot org. September 29th, Twist and Stout at Quiet Waters Park, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tickets at twistandstout.org. They say opinions are like, here we are with a dose of opinion for you. I'm not sure if Annapolis is rising or Annapolis has risen, but it has been a week and a few days since Annapolis rising, the benefit for the Capital Gazette Families Fund, and by most accounts, it was a screaming success. I was a skeptic. I was proven wrong. But I still reserve some of my skepticism until we get the final accounting of the event. Sure, we're going to know the amount donated. That's the easy part. But will we ever know the true cost? Annapolis is known for robbing Peter to pay Paul, slide a little money here, shuffle a little money there. In fact, a lawsuit against a staffer in the mayor's office was settled recently with funds from the snow removal budget. Funds and hope that there would be no more snow. So I, for one, am anxious to see the accounting. And unfortunately, the only way we'll be able to see it is if the city council moves forward and retroactively becomes a co-sponsor of the event and waives the costs associated with permits, security, and all that. You see, at this point, the benefit is sponsored by a freshly formed LLC located in a condominium off of Vestgate Road, whose resident agent is a large donor of the mayor's campaign, and the Annapolis Arts District, which are two private entities. As private concerns, their financial books are simply not available unless they want to put them forth. When the city co-sponsors the festival, then the books become, well, an open book. A great deal of effort went into planning Annapolis Rising. I have heard that there were five city employees working full-time on this for three or more weeks, including the city's own concert planner, Max Huber. If the city is not a co-sponsor, will these costs be reimbursed? Will we ever know what they are or were? 
We were unable to determine the ancillary cost prior to the event, and hopefully they will come to light afterwards. While we did not pay for the talent, did we pay for expenses for the talent? Did Good Charlotte play it completely for free, or did we need to cover the transportation and lodging and costs for their roadies? How much revenue was lost from the Gotts Court garage having the main entrance closed on a Saturday in the middle of summer? And let's talk beer. Was an alcohol permit applied for and issued? I can't find one. According to the city code, if an event is held on city property, which this was, it was held on Calvert Street, there must be an alcohol beverage control board hearing 45 days prior to the event. There was not one. Were the people distributing the liquor properly trained to recognize overconsumption? And were they all of age to serve? Was the beer donated by Catsef or was it purchased? And if purchased, by whom? And how much was made off of it? The city has been very coy in putting forth any information. All we get is things are still being tallied. Once again, I do give great kudos to the organizers for pulling it off. It was a fantastic day. It brought the community together. It was a wonderful cause, and I have yet to run across anyone who had a shitty time. But with everything, the devil is in the details. And come September, I urge the city council to vote in favor of sponsoring this initiative and let those details come to light. And that's what I'm thinking today. Hi, I'm Anne Arundel County Executive Steve Hsu. Pain never killed anyone, but heroin does. We're tired of losing our mothers, fathers, daughters, and sons to this epidemic. Step up and join our effort to stop creating new users. Doctor's orders. Go to aacounty.org slash heroin to learn more about how you can stop addiction. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.